Good afternoon. Today we talk about uh, safety factor. So we know when you have an a engineering material such as steel, right? when you're applying load, you're going to lead to uh, stress, uh, strain relation like this. So the stress versus the strain will be, first the stress will go up pretty much linearly, and then at this yield point, it will start to uh, generate large deformation, and may go up a little bit, and then the material fail. So for uh, any application of uh, engineering material, we want to make sure uh, the stress is below the yield stress and to make it safe. Right? Uh, however, in many cases, uh, we don't want the stress actually going up to sigma y, the yield stress. So we want uh, somehow the structure be safer because if the stress at sigma y, let's say something happens, if uh, a wind blow or someone jump on it, and then the structure can fail. Okay, so we want to make uh, it really safe by reducing the stress you actually design in a structure uh, as compared to a sigma y. So therefore, we want uh, say reduce the stress. Uh, by n by a factor of uh, ten, of, uh, sorry, a factor of n. Right. So you reduce the stress by f by a factor of n, and that it means you reduce the stress right, by n times, and you design structure the stress go to this level then. It's n times safer, right? so we call this stress actually the allowable stress, and that is sigma allow or equal to uh, sigma y over n. So uh, for the homework problems, actually for a uh, practical problem as well. Uh, we often uh, come with three type of questions. One is, you know the material, you know the sigma y, and you know the safety factor you want, and then you calculate this, how much the stress can go, right, the sigma allow. Another type of problem is, uh, I know uh, how high the stress, and then I know what the safety factor I want, and then I calculate what the material I select, right, calculate sigma y. Of course, the third one is you know the stress in the wall, uh, in the structure, and also you know the material, sigma y. Then you can use the same equation, determine n, and so you know what's the safety factor you actually have. Okay, here let's uh, look over one example uh, to see how can we use safety factor to uh, actually check on structure safety, all right? So let's say we have uh, uh, this structure. So we have this uh, ceiling here, right? So we need the high uh, a load. So we have a rigid beam here. So we kind of assume this is rigid. And we have uh, two cables to hang, so one cable here, right? and then we have uh, another cable, okay, that's bigger. So let's say we have two cable combined together here. Right? So this cross-sectional area will be A. Uh, let's make it, uh, well, let's say, equals 10 uh, millimeter square. Right? And then let's say we have um, this one will be 2A, the cross-sectional area. And we have a load right at here, right at the middle. So the P, we can give a value equals to, um, say, a value of uh, one kilopascal, right? And we know this distance here, L, L, this equally distribute. And also we know for this two bars, uh, the material, is a, a, a steel, a soft steel. So the stress, the uh, yield stress, right, 
or uh, if the material basically the limit or sometimes if not still can be a maximum strength uh, that can go up to uh, let's say we can make it um, 100 uh, say 120 megapascal right so now we want uh, a safety factor let's say of uh, n equals to 3. So we want to check uh, if whether uh, the structure is uh, safe. the structure is safe. Okay, so how can we uh, do this analysis? Right. Where to start? So we can think about this way. Right. We need to know uh, whether the structure is safe. Right. So we know sigma y. Therefore, uh, also we know the uh, safety factor. So therefore, we can determine what's the allowable stress. So how high the stress can go. Right. So that is uh, sigma y over n and take the number in there so 120 over 3 so that is uh, 40 40 megapascal okay so basically we need to find out in this structure right, uh, the two bars the one on the left and the, the one on the right whether the stress inside these two bars uh, is below the 40 or is above 40 because they, for the Below 40, then it's safe. If it's above, then it's not safe enough, right? For the requirement of safety factor three, all right? So how can we find the stress in these two bars? So to find the stress, we need to know the force in these two bars, right? Because the stress is force over area. Right? So how can we find the force in these two bars? Now recall what we uh, mentioned previously right? um, we need basically use equation of equilibrium find out the internal force or the local force in the two bars okay so how can we find out the internal force make a cut right so we can make a cut here and then make a cut here right so let me draw the free body diagram here so we can Basically, select this rigid bar right, as our object. So, for the free uh, body diagram, right? So, here is the bar that you made the cut. So, here you have a reaction. Let's call this one N1. And then you made the cut here. So, this bar, you're going to have a force N2, right? So, the load P is applied here. So, this is a complete free body diagram, right? Just select the rigid body uh, beam as the uh, free body and then you label all the load and the reactions of the forces so this is a complete free body diagram all right now how can we find the n1 n2 of course equation of uh, equilibrium right so what can we get from equation of equilibrium we have first all the forces in the y direction must be zero so that give us n1 plus n2 and then minus is p equals zero, right? Okay, two unknowns, one equation. So we need another equation. Well, right, so that be uh, all the movement to any point equals zero. You can pick any point. Let's say this point A, this point uh, C here, and then this will be point B. Okay, so you can pick either A, B, or C. So make it easier, we'll pick the point at uh, middle, C, equals zero, right? Or the moment to C equals zero. Okay, so the moment to C, right? So you have N1, generate moment, that is uh, moment of the force times the distance. So N1 times L, because we know this is L here, this L equals distribute. So that is uh, clockwise. So you, we can say it's a negative direction. And then the other one, you have an N2, 
that's in a positive direction. It's uh, counterclockwise times L, supposed to be 0. Okay, so immediately we get from this equation that N1 equals N2. Okay, now, so take it back to equation 1 here, the first equation, so we know they will be equal, they will be uh, half P. Right? So each one will be 0.5 kilo Newton. Okay, now we know the forces uh, in the bars, so we can calculate the stress. So immediately we can calculate okay, sigma 1 or equals to uh, N1 over area A. Okay, actually it's not over, it's over A1, right? So A1 we say is, uh, okay, so basically here is uh, 1K, no, actually, so it's point. 5k, right? And a1, we said is, uh, we know it's twice the a. So see here, uh, 2a, that is, uh, should be 20 millimeter square, right? So put it in here, so you have this will be 20 millimeter square, and this will be kilo newton, all right? So do the calculation and convert the unit. Remember, one millimeter square is 10 minus six meter square. So that gives you a uh, 10, six there. So you end up as two, actually 25, right? Make Pascal, all right? Now sigma two will have N2 over A2, and that is 0.5 kilonewton over A1, that's 10 millimeter uh, square, right? So that gave us what do you get? So it will be 50 mag Pascal, all right? Okay, now is this structure safe? Okay, how do we judge? Okay, so we can look at the, all the parts, right? Make each part is safe, then the structure is safe. Okay, look at the part one, the one cable on the left. So you can have a stress 25 megapascal, and that is smaller than the sigma allow. Right? Sigma allow here is 40, so this is smaller than sigma allow. So this one is safe. Now look at this one; it's actually bigger than sigma allow, so it's not safe. Now combine these two: is the structure safe? No, right? So it's not uh, safe. Because you're going to have one uh, part fail, then the whole structure fail. All right. Okay. So uh, so far we uh, kind of finished uh, chapter one. So here is a slide. Uh, actually, we can summarize uh, this this part. Okay. So let me find it here. Uh, we have this slide. Summary page. Okay. okay, so this is the, uh, a page actually summarize what we have in, uh, in chapter one. So we talk about uh, the forces, right? So the force here, and then we talk about. Uh, stress and man strain. So we relate them together, right? And we talk material behave, how material behave under uh, actual uh, stretch, right? Actually um, do a testing, a tensile test. So we have a Hooke's law that related stress to strain linearly, uh, the shear stress also to shear strain linearly. Then uh, we talk about the concept of safety factor, as we just discussed uh, today, uh, using example. So uh, this uh, is important. Uh, you calculate the allowable stress and determine the allowable load. Okay. So um, there are homeworks related to this. Okay. Give it a try and see if you solve the homework problem. And if you have questions, bring next to next lecture or just come to mind.
of this during office hours. All right. Thank you.